So I am here to talk about Moneyland by Oliver Bullock, um, by the subtitle with the words thieves and crooks, you can tell where he's sitting on the fence. Um, he is obviously very, um, if I was to characterize him, I'd have said he was against Brexit and he was a very leftist politician type person. It says it's a book for those who are in politics and business and, and think, you know, that and a politician wants to read, okay? So, it's interesting because obviously at the heart of this book, he's wanting to stop people from being able to hide money, hide lots of money in places and just hoard the wealth rather than spend the wealth. You know, rather than sharing it, they want to hoard it in his opinion. And he feels that if we all work together in such a thing like like um, possibly the European Union, although it doesn't specifically say that, that that would be able to implement laws uh, unanimously throughout all countries and all nations in order to um, stop people from being able to launder money, from being able to have overseas cash flows and stop them from being able to do it that way. Now, for me, I am thinking that it's incredibly irritating. I didn't want to read it, but the guy at the at Waterstones said that I should, and that he thoroughly enjoyed the read, and he thought it was very, very interesting. So I bit the bullet and I decided to read it because I always find that that journalists just seem to be an opposition party and that most people hate the rich and unduly so and that's just because of out, because of jealousy you know and you've got to you got to dislike someone not just because you're jealous but because you've got other reasons to dislike them so the things that i liked about this book was him kind of calling out and saying what we'd normally think and say look if you're going to spend obscene amounts of cash on ridiculous things you know, on ridiculous parties and things like that, and on bribes and corrupting people, and on wedding dresses, on say yes to the dress, then, you know, you could have spent it on the starving, you could have spent it on vaccinations for people, for HIV, and you could have spent it on lots of different things. But from my perspective, I don't think he's quite realised, um, particularly for Ukraine and Africa, um, the, the kind of histrionics of social, you know, social behaviour um, and how society has its moralities and, and how, you know, the subconscious does rule most people's brains. Um, and subconsciously, places like the Ukraine and Africa had rulers who are incredibly... Um, objectionable is, is the word that comes front to my brain but it's not quite what the word I'm, I'm looking for they're very um not utilitarian they're very it's my way or the highway you know they're very in the past such as peter the great of russia and romania and ukraine and africa they execute people for small things like being gay. They execute people um, because they've said something against the government. They execute people for, for things. And, you know, if they're, if they're not seen to be the good, strong historical leader that the people, the majority of people actually like, then then they, they might lose their position of power and end up like the French nobility being guillotined. But at the same time, the French nobility were guillotined for a reason, and that's because they spent obscene amounts of cash rather than spending it on their people. So when I read about the laughable and amusing but partially truthful response from a politician about his daughter going on the American programme, Say Yes to the Dress, and spending 
obscene amounts of cash on wedding dresses or nine different types of wedding dresses to wear throughout the day saying that what people don't understand is that this will um, encourage people within my country to make goods like that to sell to people you know it will encourage people to to find a way of commerce it encourages people to to make more or less the same thing but at a reduced price within my nation for people within my nation and it gives them a sense of what kind of jobs they could get in order to get the kind of cash that they'd like to live with you know people find that ridiculous but i can see where they're coming because in their world influence is the most important tool you have in your arsenal and being seen to you know being seen to to um go by what the people say they don't want but in actual fact do want because what i find is that a lot of people who don't have a lot of cash to flash and a lot of people who are not politicians are much, much more judgmental towards those who have a lot of cash than they are to each other. And I know that people are going to say that that's not true, but it really, really, truly, from what I see, if... If the rich don't meet expectations of being rich, they're being disingenuous to that um, portion of society. And if you seem to be disingenuous, a lot of people just just will decide that they don't like you. And it just doesn't seem to, you know, you can't do right for doing wrong. They will always just dislike you. You know, and I find that with Donald Trump, I mean, you know, he made a comment about Donald Trump, which I did not like. And I didn't like the comment that he made um, about um, our Brexiteers. Um, you know, that Donald, if Donald Trump and uh, I've forgotten who, I've forgotten his name, that he, that he, he went and insisted on Brexit. He was the, the poster boy for Brexit. Um and a fellow journalist he'd said that you know if people like donald trump believed in um creating you know in, in not closing off borders and uh, that and and just believed less in closing borders from foreigners to be the only uh, means to solving this problem that we have with people tax evading by hiding money in shell companies overseas and hiding money in in places that our country can't get to and had like a european union unanimous law for all countries that this problem would stop I didn't like that because I thought, well, actually, I don't think that the problem would stop because I think the European Union, although he didn't say the European Union, I, I genuinely think that he, he believed, he, you know, it's, it's kind of um, implied in what he said at the, at the end. I don't, I, I think the European, there's lots of money hiding within the European Union that isn't accounted for. So the European Union, to me, just reminds me of a great big off offshore company that dictates to everybody else that they need to keep um, a, tag, a tab on, on how much money they're making and to report back to them, but that they don't need to do that themselves. And that's, you know, it is... The European Union is basically an offshore company. Or, you know, it's an offshore bank account. And a lot of people, although the, I'm not denying that the European Union hasn't done a lot of good, like he himself doesn't deny that uh, the, creati the creation of fake passports he recognises had helped people who were Jewish get out of a lot of trouble during the war. He, he does recognise the good that 
that um, some of these bad negative schemes had done later on after it had gone through the hands of the rich and was passed on to other people that you know it is a recognizable fact that the European Union has done some good in the world you know but like coronavirus has taught us do we need to spend the amount of cash we did on getting them all into the one room into the one country to have a discussion or could have we could we just have had um, a big webinar between the leaders of different nations you know could it be done by webinar I know that sounds like total madness in consideration of how many countries there are in the world and how much of an organisational pull it would have to have had, but I don't see why they needed to have the big kind of conversational drink starting, the big expensive meetings, how we send people over there, politicians over there to speak to people. Um, you know, it could have been done in a lot cheaper fashion. And, and I found that there will always be um, legal loopholes. Now, I didn't like the use of the word loophole because the way he does it is he says, you know, this, he, he describes them as being illegal. Well, the fact is, he might not like Donald Trump, but there is a certain amount of wisdom in what he's actually said in the past. A law is not a law unless it's, unless it's actually acted upon. A law is not a law unless it is enforced. And the fact is, is that it was perfectly legal for all these people to have these offshore companies. It's just that once people got a hold and understood what they were doing, they didn't like it. So, you know, they like, you know, people like to know other people's business. They like to know where the money's going so that they can keep tabs on it, doing what they said it would do, which is perfectly reasonable. I'm not saying it's not reasonable. I just dislike the fact that he characterises it as illegal when it's not illegal. And that's the whole point of the book. It's not an illegal thing. Okay? Um, loopholes are legal. Okay? It might be morally reprehensible, but it is legal. And... I have to admit, I have to admit, embarrassingly enough, I, I wished I had an offshore company because, boy, the amount of things I could think of to do with the money that would come from an offshore company. But the other thing that he's not actually thinking about is that when you create a business overseas, they're not necessarily going to let you create a business unless you have an identity in that country. And if you haven't got a fake passport, the only identity you can have in that country is, an, is a bank account, a traceable bank account, you know? And then you, you're capable of creating a business. So yes, it is a legal loophole. Yes, they're, they're kind of hiding cash and using it as a cash flow to send the cash somewhere else. But if those individual countries, as he said in his own book, have specific laws and rules against you, having, you know, using particular bank accounts from particular nations, from particular countries, then what do you expect? You know? And I'm not saying, you know, Brexit doesn't stop us from having a united law that goes across borders for everybody. The fact is, is that they, you know, they did what everybody else would do and they didn't necessarily declare it because they didn't necessarily, you know, they, you know, when we, when we see an opportunity to gain, we tend to go for the gain, you know, um, and that goes for all classes. So I would feel wrong if I was to condemn someone for doing exactly what was legal at the time, but I do think that it is perfectly possible that we stop people from um, using these legal loopholes 
but yeah I you know I think it's f offensive to call them thieves because what they did was legal it's just morally repugnant um, they're not thieves they're just morally repugnant people that have decided to do something that was morally repugnant to the rest of society but I do feel a certain amount of sympathy or at least not sympathy but empathy towards them because when you're a politician you const you know you constantly constantly under surveillance from the press particularly if you've done something big you know um, if you are a, a, you know a member of the elite you know born into the society of the elites like the royals and if you are um, a princess or a president of Africa or a prime minister of Africa or whatever you know a king of Africa then you will be being followed and constantly being having every single thing you do judged so I can understand why she would kind of grow up with this idea that I have to act in a certain way because otherwise I'm not the person that they, they're wanting to watch you know it's like it's like having a YouTube channel of your own and you create your YouTube you know persona and then if you don't keep to that persona and if you change that persona um, people either think that you're being disingenuous or that you're not you're not truly the person that you say that you are um, and disingenuous uh, leads to a, a feeling of incongruity and if there's not a feeling of congruity then people don't tend to trust and people don't tend to want to do as they're told or as they need to to keep society running um, otherwise I think he's right you know so uh, I I have actually enjoyed my read I didn't think that I would but I actually did enjoy it and now I'd better stop this video because I need to go and help my dad cook the tea okay so see you later and um bye bye